losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need We're broken, it's tragic We're not all elastic But maybe there's magic Believe you could have it And I know of sadness The anxious and panic The infinite vastness Of all that is blackness Um, my name's Talon. Uh, this is the first review or whatever on my channel. Um, I am doing the Motive Propel bowling shoes that they did in collaboration with KR Strike Force. Hey y'all, I did uh, forget to mention that I bought these shoes on my own with my own money. It was they were not sent to me. Nobody will look at the video um, before I wind up posting it. Nobody knows that I'm actually really doing this video. Uh, and yeah, all thoughts and actions are my own. Nobody's paying me to do this. And um, let's talk about it. I do also have my old pair of bowling shoes to compare and to show you why I got rid of them and needed to replace them. Um, first off, let's get started with what comes in the bag. Um, you get an S8, an S10, an S6, three heels, super sliding, shark tooth, and just, you know, basic heels. Coming up. The midsole does have a, I believe, 26 millimeter heel to toe drop with about 38 in the heel and about 12, 13 millimeters in the uh, forefoot. Um, it is a very stable shoe. I do have three horns in them. Let's get those out. And compared to neutral running shoes, I would say this is a stability shoe due to the TPU and hardened stability and cushioning system in here. Um, on the right foot, we got an unremovable traction sole, but removable heel. On the left foot, removable slide sole, removable heel. Coming up, they also have a basic EVA um, midsole on top of the TPU, then go up to a synthetic leather with overlays. And on the inside of the shoe, they did have these ortholite insoles. Um, get back to these in a hot second when I talk about the cushioning and how that feels so far. And basic lacing system on the shoe. Uh, they do have reinforcement stitches all throughout. Tongue is not gusseted. And everything in the insoles were not glued in, which is one of my favorite things. Um, now working from the top up, I wear seven and a half shoe. They only make eight to, I believe, 13 or 14. And they don't make any women's size shoes, which I do not agree with because they are missing a huge market. Not only that, um, they're also missing a huge market on people with smaller feet like myself. Now, coming from the upper down, um, durability wise, I don't really know how long they're gonna last because right up through here, 
you already got creases all throughout. Um, that would be a little bit different if you were using the, I believe it's the flash where it has the knit upper um, with that. But these are very comfortable. Um, they do take about, oh, probably about three, three games to break in or so um, from what I've seen. But only more comfort is expected to come, kind of like when you wear a baseball glove and it takes a little while for it to get broken in. Um, the midsole, honestly, really comfortable. Um, and it also helped out that I did switch the insoles. Um, that is due to how high the drop is and the fact that these, which I don't like, feel like the cheap Skechers um, memory foam that I didn't choose um, compared to other ortho like insoles that I've used in the past with my running shoes. Um, these feel like once I step on them, they just pancake out because it is, it feels like a memory foam um, type. Not only that, arch support really isn't the best. It's held up by the stitched in side and there really isn't all too much to it. It's kind of like they have to these, um, in my opinion. But that's why I went out, went to my local um, shoe store and got me some keen utility um, inserts along with a couple of arch cookies in my metal tire salt and, you know, just a bigger arch. They were pretty easy to fit in. It was only an extra, I think, what, 40 bucks. But these are going to help make the shoe last longer and help me be more comfortable in all my tournaments and leagues I bowl it. Um, I bowl collegiately. And yeah. Now, let's get going down to the bottom. So on the push foot, which is my right foot, because I'm a right-handed bowler, um, honestly, I have to say the traction is actually really good. It's better than a lot of basketball shoes, I feel like. But that also is dependent on a lot of other surfaces. Um, I've bowled in three bowling alleys, um, which was Marshall Lanes in Marshall, Michigan, Char Lanes in Charlotte, Michigan, and Jack 60 over at Jackson, Michigan. Um, yeah. Now, the heels, um, they do have this locking mechanism, and they do lock into the shoe. The Velcro is a little bit easy to get off at points, but well, that's why they have the locks in them. One thing I do not like about these, and I have seen uh, when I've been bowling in them, and it looks like I either got something bad or whatever in these shoes is that when you set them down on something like even when you step you can like just press on the heel and it's like not level it's like this side of the, the heel side of the shoe is higher than the push side at least at the beginning because when you break you know let's say you're sliding doesn't matter which foot and then you break you go here and then you immediately like roll back on like a rocking chair and that causes an instability in your knee and a lot of other places in your body when you do break and it causes you to lurch back a little bit, which I do find highly uncomfortable at a lot of points. Um, and it doesn't matter what slide sole or heel I have on the shoe, they all do that as you can see. You know, you just press back here, boom, boom, boom. And I don't really understand that. Seems like it'd be the other way around where the heel touches before the, um, the back of the heel touches before the front of the heel. But maybe that's something they can improve upon in all their shoes at, over there at KR. 
um, and future pairs of Motive shoes. Um, yeah. Now, in comparison to my 3Gs, I didn't get any lace in them, and I'm sorry about that. If anybody wants to send them over, that would be awesome. Um, honestly, with the added insole, the are a little bit heavier, I feel like, according to the guesstimation, but these are also very well broken in. And the reason why I got a new pair of these is because I blew the back out. Um, after a lot of bowling, I'd say probably about 2,000 games or so, I blew the back out. Um, and then there is some Meyer wear right here. Um, I didn't have to replace the toe cap, which is fairly nice. And yeah. Um, in comparison with the other slide foot, uh, the technology is completely different. They have a firmer EVA foam base on here and different locking mechanism on their shoes or their heels. Along with, they come with different types of um, soles than, than these do. And I feel like that the soles are a lot easily comparable through each. Um, uh, let's talk about price. These cost me $218 out of my local pro shop, which I do love supporting. Um, and they also cost roughly, I believe, $199, so $200 on the nose through let's say like Bowler X, but always try to go to your um, pro shop first, get everything ordered through them because they can either get it faster for cheap, faster, and you don't have to pay the $50 extra for the fast day shipping. You just have to pay $18 and you get support your local community. Um, what else? And if they don't fit, they can send them back or sell them to another customer who do need them, who does need them. Um, now with the fit, because I am a seven and a half going into an eight, it is a little bit big in the toe box. Um, on a size, it feels okay. It's just a little bit big. Um, it does help that I did put the thicker insole in them. Uh, and yeah. Um, improvements I can see KR making, which I do hope they do, is a couple a redesign of their ortholite inserts um firmer kind of like a running shoe so they can get that done um along with possibly even getting more influences from running shoes like um not nearly as high of a heel to toe drop um 26 or 24 millimeters is very high um and along with, um, in regards to uppers, at least for knits or something like that, you can uh, take a look at any running trail shoe. Um, the Brooks Catamount is a good one to look at um, because they ha are a very breathable upper. Um, they are secure and they are very durable. Um, any Salomon upper, for the most part, also works out very well. And um, that would provide more comfort and more security to the bowler. Um, and along with it being leather and all the extra overlays and everything, I don't think that they're needed. Um, it probably did make the shoe a lot heavier than what it needed to be. All right. And um, I'm going to be including clips of me bowling at Marshall when I first got the shoes, figuring them out. This is me bowling on the 39 or 38 foot uh, USB-C Masters pattern. I don't remember what year it is from. Um, after this, I did cut the S10 and S8 sole in half. And my thumb stuck there because I grabbed the grip out of the ball. Um, yeah. But overall, shoes are fairly nice. It, it 
they do take a second to get used to, especially with the heel that I didn't mess, me, mention about earlier. But after I put the S10 up top on the side and S8 on the bottom to make kind of an S9 type of sole, everything kind of clicked and everything just mellowed out a lot better and easier for me. And yeah. All right. Thank you and have a great day.